knock, and ready to rock. Now that our bow is in the press properly, the next thing that I do is replace the strings and cables. A lot of the strings and cables on the bows from the factory are great sets of strings and cables. However, I prefer to personalize mine by picking a color that I want, as well as I really think it's important to always have a backup set with you in your bow case, and I utilize the factory string for that. There's been instances where I've been on a trip and I've accidentally cut a string or a cable. And if you're in the middle of nowhere and they're not able to find you a replacement string or cable at that local shop, then you're pretty much stuck. So by having your factory set as your backup, you're gonna be in a perfect position if you ever do have some type of accident. Now, the next thing that I do is I take a small piece of masking tape and I'll slide it behind the limb and stick it on the cam. Then I'll take a pen and I'll mark the, that cam using the inside of the limb as a reference. And what that does, if we do it on both sides, is as we replace these, it's gonna make sure that we get this bow right back to factory specs. It's gonna be important that these cams are in the same position and it helps assure that your axle axle length and your brace height is where it needs to be. I prefer winner's choice strings and cables. I've used them for many years and I like the fact that they don't have any issues with coming out of synchronization because of stretch and my peep sight always stays in the same place from when the bow's at rest all the way to full draw. That's going to be critical things that you look for when buying a new set of strings and cables. Now we're gonna do one at a time. We're gonna start with the string, then we're gonna move on to the cables. The main thing when you replace these is you wanna make sure that you properly hook it on the post of the cam and you wanna actually follow it in the same path all the way around the cam. And before you let it up in the press, go ahead and double check using your finger to make sure that that string is properly in the track all the way around and completely hooked on the post. Then I like to hold a little tension on the string as I let that press out. That way we make sure that the strings and the cables are in the proper track. All right, now my marks are right where they need to be, which is an indication that this string was at the perfect length. What you need to do when you take your old ones off is simply hook your two loops together because you don't ever want to remove twists out of your strings or cables if possible because again, these are at the right lengths. And that's the same case for your brand new ones out of the package. Make sure that you don't let those twists off. So now that we've got the string where we need to be, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and replace the cables. Okay, we're going to start out first with this power cable or the split yoke cable. That's the one that has the Y here at the top. Now the one thing that you need to make sure you pay attention with on cables is that you recognize where those cables lie from one another because there are two. Normally this top power cable is gonna go to the inside. So make sure you recognize which roller that's in or if it's on the far inside because as we replace it we want to make sure we keep it in that same path and we're not crossing it over to the back side of the other cable. Okay so I've gone ahead and I've replaced both sets of cables and each time I've checked those marks on that piece of tape. If by chance the mark is slightly behind the limb then you may need to just add one twist to your cable to get it into the correct position. As long as both of these are close for now, then we're going to be perfect because in the next segment, I'm going to walk you through the minor adjustments that we need to make on these strings and cables to make sure that your cam position and your cam lean is perfect. Knock and ready to rock.